If you often find it difficult to keep up the habits like having lunch or focusing on those really important but not urgent tasks like preparing for that exam in a while or gym or something like journaling, then in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I organize all of this without having to do any of the organization because of AI. Hey guys, welcome back. Arch here, a third year medical student. And on this channel, we focus on learning how to learn so we can spend our time more intentionally on the things and people that matter the most to us. This has often been a big issue for me to deal with, especially because I just overload myself with stuff a lot of the time. So on top of, you know, med school and the businesses that I'm running, the jobs that I'm in, I also have to make sure that I have enough time for my girlfriend and my family as well. So to ensure that I'm not falling behind on everything, I need to make sure that I have a central place that I can trust to know what I'm gonna be doing at a certain time. To put that simply, that's basically just my calendar, but I have so many apps that connect and integrate into this to actually make sure that all of these domains of my life are being looked after and cared for. So let's firstly look at the basics of this system to ensure that I actually know what I'm doing at certain times. So this all begins with having that single source of truth, which is the calendar for myself. If we take a look here, this is just a view of a few weeks from now where things are a little bit less busy and haven't been fully organized just yet. But this is like the minimum, assuming that I wasn't working or doing anything else outside of university and the little jobs that I'm doing. So you can see already that it's getting filled up quite a bit, but what you can notice is that in this application here called Reclaim, this is the application that actually makes sure that all these certain tasks that can move around will happen at the best time for me. To ensure that your calendar is successful, it really comes down just to two things. Number one is ensuring that you have events blocked into it. And number two, that you time block things that are kind of not these non-negotiable events that you have to attend and put them in where you think it's gonna suit best for you. This means when you're going throughout your day, you're gonna know what's coming up and you're gonna be prepared for what's coming next. Now also, I spend a lot of my time looking at the weekly view because if I'm not gonna get something done on a certain day, I need to know how that's gonna impact every other day for the rest of this week. So if we dig into that a little bit more, you can see from here, I've got all of these yellow events. These are the non-negotiables. These are the classes that I have part of university that I should be attending. Now, not all of them are in person. Some of them actually are recorded as well, but I just have them here for kind of the sake of it. And you can see that I've got travel booked in here as well. So for me, the commute is around 90 minutes to get to university. So having that two hours blocked beforehand, a actual event at university, makes it really easy for me to ensure that I'm not gonna book anything there that is actually impossible for me to actually commit to. Now, what you can also notice is the events here that come in this dotted box are the tasks that I want to get done. You know, the pieces of work that I want to slot into my schedule that are not necessarily like a thing that has to happen at that time, but this is where I would like to do it. And so that's how you begin to use a calendar. But one of the most important things in actually being successful with it is ensuring that you rely on it. You make it part of your system. If you put some things onto the calendar, but then put them elsewhere, then you're really gonna kind of forget about this and abandon it. Now using your calendar in combination with a to-do list is actually completely okay and I highly recommend it, but it's a slightly different thing. It's more complicated. So I talk about that in my videos about Amazing Marvin. So as long as you have your non-negotiable events, the things that you absolutely have to go to, within your calendar, you're gonna know what you need to work around. And then what you'll quickly realize is how much time you don't have. So you need to make sure that you're scheduling that appropriately so that you don't lose out on extra time. So we know it's a good thing to use our calendar and to engage in this process of time blocking, but there's actually some limitations that come with it. While it's good to know what you have coming up in the week and what you can realistically do within a day, what you'll often find is one, either you're always going overtime on things, or two, the uncertainty of the day comes up and catches you by the back. And essentially you realize that there's all these other things that you have to do and all these urgent tasks just like fly at you and then your whole schedule just breaks apart. So the quick fix, if you always find that you're not following your schedule and things are taking Taking longer than expected is just to overestimate how long things take. You should schedule out your calendar like it's gonna be the worst day that you could have. And that means that your schedule can become that single source of truth if all things go loose. Now, if you end up having more time, you can finish tasks early and move on to the next task even earlier. There's no problem with that. But if you're being too optimistic with your calendar, then as soon as something goes over time, everything's just gonna break apart and you're not gonna look at it and you're gonna give up on it. So the problem is that the day really never goes perfectly. And so those really important but not urgent tasks, like for example, going to gym, are just gonna get pushed back and pushed back 
all of the time. So what you might notice here is, is that I've got exercise booked in at 5 to 6 p.m. after I've traveled home from university. But the problem is, is that if I travel for a little bit longer or I spend more times with friends at university, that time block is at a huge risk of just being overridden. So how do I kind of keep track of everything to ensure that I'm keeping up these habits to a certain frequency and making sure that I can also move things flexibly when things get pretty hectic? So that's what I want to talk about by getting deep into how I actually use Reclaim. So as you've already seen, this is what Reclaim looks like. It's got my calendar, it's got my priority habits, open tasks, and all of these lower priority habits. Now I actually spend most of my time looking at Google Calendar instead of Reclaim because Google Calendar just looks a little bit more simple and I don't need all those features from Reclaim because it's often just working in the background. So what does Reclaim actually do? Essentially what I gather from it is that it helps you save time by not having to do all of the scheduling. It's one of those applications that does smart scheduling based on the parameters that you put into it. So if we look at something like exercise here, you can see that right now it's got this emoji next to it that says free, which means it's ready to be moved in case something else takes up on that time. But you can see that what's on the left is actually a shield, which means that this is locked. No one can book over that time. This task cannot be moved back anymore. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get it done on the Monday because you can see after here, I've actually got a progress test, which is an exam. Now you can also see that on Sundays, I have two hours to record some TikToks. That can move freely, but if that moves enough down the Sunday, then eventually that's gonna lock up as well. For me personally, that is an extremely important thing. I have people booking into my calendar all of the time, so I need things to move flexibly just to make it easier for other people, but not to the point that it's gonna er eradicate this from my week entirely. Now, if you're just trying to manage your own tasks, you might time block something into your calendar, and then you realize that that's actually gonna go on top of your exercise time. And Reclaim will tell you if that's gonna cause a big problem because it's actually gonna screw up your you know, frequency of this keeping up this habit. So if we take a look at some of the habits that I've actually got here, you can see that I've actually got quite a few. Um, so we've got lunch, you know, morning catch up, afternoon catch up, having a call with my girlfriend, um, making sure I have enough time for exercise, this thing called the weekly review, which I highly recommend, um, writing up my newsletter, and also to have enough time to record some TikToks. You can really see that my highest priority habit here is lunch. I will make certain that I will always have lunch every single day. And to be honest, when I didn't actually have this app, there'd be often cases where people would book meetings with me or I would have to do some certain task that's taking a little bit longer and I just wouldn't have enough time for lunch. Now with all of these other habits, Reclaim will do its best to protect that time. But if I have an ultra busy day, it will just get rid of it and that's okay. There are some exceptions to some of these habits that I don't have to have them actually done at the same frequency every week. So that's why they're below priority of where the task may be. So you can also see that I have this morning catch up and the afternoon catch up also sometimes. This is a very useful time for me to go through all of the messages that I've received through the day on Messenger, Instagram, email, etc., because I definitely don't wanna be checking them all of the time throughout the day. So that helps me batch my tasks so that I can focus on them and get it all done in one go. Another thing that's really useful is that it can also add buffers to certain events. If you don't already use buffers, it can be a really good technique to use to deal with the uncertainty that comes up within a day. So often when I'm scheduling my day, I will have like a good hour, you know, maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, that's going to be scheduled literally to say, you know, just buffer, like nothing's going to happen in it. The reason for that is because there's always going to be something else that comes up that will take up that time. So I need to make sure that there's wiggle room within my day to ensure that I can work around when these things pop up. Now, when it comes to things like study or work, I actually use the task feature inside Reclaim so that it can automatically find the best time for me to do this. This is especially important when it comes to things like study. I know personally that for a given week, I may only need to do five to 10 hours worth of university to ensure that I'm ready for the weekly test that we have. Therefore, I absolutely need to make sure that I have that time available with my calendar, ensuring that I'm not overbooking in terms of meetings and also doing other tasks and work. So let's look at a way that we can set that up within Reclaim to ensure that I can actually get this study done within this week. So what I can do is, you know, Command K, I can type create task, you can see as well, there's a keyboard shortcut for just C. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna do some study for uh, the team-based learning uh, that's you know on the Friday of the 27th. I'm gonna need at least five hours and I'm gonna do this during my personal hours. I'm not necessarily gonna do it just during work, but I do know that when I go ahead and study, it needs to be at least an hour. I can't do it to a 30 minute block. It's really just not gonna be that useful. Um, 
And if I'm going to do five hours in a row, that's probably not gonna happen. Maybe I'd only do three hours as a maximum. Now, I'm gonna make sure that this starts, uh, this, you know, the first time that this could happen is actually on the 23rd. Um, and I wanna make sure that I get this done by Wednesday. So I have a little bit of uh, revision time if I need um, by Friday. Now, technically I could say by Friday cause that's when the exam is, um, but you know, it's, it's nice to get it done a little bit earlier in the week. There's some extra features here. So, you know, Reclaim is often used for people who are professionals and like uh, might, might share their calendar with other people. And so you may not want other people to know what you're specifically doing. You just want them to know that you're busy. Now I share that with a lot of people as well. So I can click uh, save on that. I mean, you can change the emoji, but that's not really useful for us. Um, we'll click save or, you know, uh, command enter to do that. And then it will schedule it in. So you can see now that it's in my calendar uh, for basically 7.30. I wake up at 6 a.m. anyway, so this is actually a decent time for me. Um, and then we can just basically look at the options that are available for it. So, you know, we can edit it, mark it done. You can track time if you really wanted to. Um, but these features here, especially prioritization and snooze or adding extra time that to how long this might take for me, is really quite useful. Often I find myself pressing that snooze button if I know that something else is gonna be coming up. So I can click snooze and I say that, you know, I'm not really, really not gonna be able to do this for, you know, the next two hours. Um, so it will kind of split it up now and find ways for this to have fit within my calendar. So I just noticed that my Wednesday and Thursday was basically turned off because I'm going to Melbourne. So that caused a little bit of issues. But you can see here now that the study time block is shown in the morning, you know, at night time, which is fine for the parameters I put there. Um, and then also on the Tuesday, and then I've got the five hours done. Now I might find that's not actually really feasible for me. So again, I can go to this and I can actually snooze this by, let's say, you know, I can't do this for at least the next two hours. And then what you notice is everything just moves. So, you know, now the only uh, time on Monday is actually gonna be at 9 p.m. We've got the time on Tuesday and then an extra time at 5 p.m on the Tuesday. So it's actually really, really useful, including the ability to add time. And when I add all those tasks in, I know that it's gonna all fit within my calendar perfectly. So I don't have to worry about missing out on something halfway through the week and, you know, just fretting over its urgency. And then every weekend, I can kind of take a quick look at the stats, see how I'm spending my time, spending my life, and see if I wanna make any changes to ensure that I'm living the life that I wanna be living. So this is the end result of what my calendar may look like. Uh, before I add in all of the tasks and essentially I can just sit back and just do all the work. Uh, there's a lot of it, but you know, I don't really have to worry about all of the scheduling and that makes things way, way easier, less stressful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about how I use this, feel free to let me know. I can make another video. And if you haven't checked out my video on how I use my to-do list on Amazing Marvin, make sure to check that out as well. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.